discussing torque and its applications, also its relationship with the uh, angular momentum. Let me start with the definition of a torque. <coughs> Mathematically, torque is defined as a cross product of radius vector, position vector, and force. Torque is defined mathematically defined as the cross product of position vector and of force. In equation form, we can write torque is equal to R cross F. Basically, torque is a mathematical agent which causes the change in angular moment. It is an agent which causes the change in angular moment. If there is a torque on a system, but we can say that the angular momentum of that system will change. It is a vector and its direction is given by the cross product of R and F. That is, uh, the direction of the torque is perpendicular uh, perpendicular to the plane formed by R and F. Magnitude of torque is given by R F sine of theta, where theta is angle between radius vector and force. Torque is always defined about a fixed point. If we take the fixed point here, and here to this body, we apply a force F, let us suppose. This is the radius vector R. And if I proceed in the forward direction, this is the angle theta between the radius vector and the force. And this point is fixed. Now, the torque created by this force on this body is given by the equation first. But here, if I, proceed, if I proceed this force in the backward direction and then I draw a perpendicular from fixed point on the force line, this distance from here to here is R perpendicular given by it is also theta, it is R sine theta. And if I resolve this, if I draw a perpendicular from force, if I resolve this force to components, this component will be F sine theta and this component will be F cos theta. From here, this is all F sine theta. F sine theta is the perpendicular component of force on the radius vector. Or it can even be written as F or sine theta, where R sine theta is a perpendicular on the force axis. So in other words, we can write down torque is given by R F perpendicular R is equal to F R perpendicular. This means that the radius vector and force which are perpendicular to each other are just multiplied. So in order to get the magnitude of torque, we multiply that radius vector and that force component which are perpendicular to, uh, perpendicular to each other. In other words, let me write it like this. Torque is product of radius vector and force, which are perpendicular to each other. Point number second. Let me take a coordinate system x, y, and of course this is the z axis. 
perpendicular to x and y. This is the body here. Let me suppose force Fx on the body. This is the radius vector r. And this is angle theta. And from the coordinate system point of view, again, torque can be written as r cross f. The magnitude will be given by r f sine theta. Number third, if I want to write torque in terms of components, I mean that if I want to put it in terms of uh, x, y, and z components, it can be written as torque is putting all in the components, that's i x plus j y plus k z, and cross f will also be written as the components i f x plus j f y plus k f z. Now torque will be written as that is i j and k writing x y and z here and then writing f x f y f z. Expanding this uh, determinant, we can write it as we can write torque equal, equal to I, of course, the selector I, it is YFZ minus ZFY, multiplying these like this, plus J times. It is ZFX minus XFZ plus K times XFY minus YFZ, YFX, yes. This is the expression for torque in terms of components. Let me write it. This is the expression for torque in terms of vector components. It is very obvious that this is x component, this is y component, and this is z component. Can write torque x, x component of torque, this is uh, y component of torque, and this is z component of torque. And now let me find out the relationship between torque and the angular moment. The relationship between torque and angular moment. Fourth point relation between torque and angular moment. In order to find the relation between torque and angular momentum, let's write down the relationships for torque and angular momentum separately. That is, torque is equal to R cross F, what we have described, and angular momentum is R cross P. In order to develop a relationship between torque and angular momentum, let me differentiate the equation second. Differentiating equation second. We get that is dl by dt is equal to d by dt of r cross p. Expanding it a little further, this dl by dt will be 
d of dt cross p plus r cross db by dt. Now here dl by dt is equal to dr by dt is nothing but velocity of the particle cross p plus r cross db by dt is nothing but force. The definition of force according to second law Newton's second law of motion. This employs differentiation of derivative of angular momentum equals V cross momentum is nothing but mass into velocity plus R cross M. This quantity will become zero because it is crossed through two similar vectors. The cross product of two similar vectors is always zero. So it is dL by dt is equal to R cross F. Using equation second, where well, we have uh, torque is uh, R cross F, one can write dL by dt is equal to torque. So this is the relationship between torque and angular momentum. Of course, we have the relation between torque and change in angular momentum. So torque is the rate of change of angular momentum. In other words, if there is torque acting on a system about a point, that means angular momentum about that point changes. So this equation employs This equation employs that that if there is torque about a point, torque about a point, then angular moment. Then angular momentum of the body of the body about about that point changes. Fourth point, sorry, fifth point. Now let's have some application techniques finding torque about mm, due to certain some forces. We already know that the torque produced by the gravitational force of the sun on the earth is zero. How is that? How the torque of the torque created by the gravitational force of the sun on the earth is zero? Let me let us say, is Earth, let me suppose it is Sun of mass m, and the Earth is here moving around the Sun in an elliptical orbit, and the force on the Earth is having this direction, and the radius vector about the Sun as the center towards the Earth is all that is this direction, and the angle between the two, R and F, is 180. So let me find the torque due to this force. This is the force created by the sun on the earth. And let me find the torque due to the due to this force on the earth. The torque due to this due to this force is given as again the same formula or cross F. Now it is magnitude of torque is R F sine theta, and torque is R F, but it is sine of 180 because the angle between the force and the radius vector is 180. And this gives us torque is zero. 
So the gravitational force on the earth due to the sun does not create any torque. This employ this means the gravitational force. The gravitational force on the earth. The gravitational force on the earth due to sun. does not create any torque. This also employs this also employs that the angular momentum of Earth about the Sun remains constant, which we obviously already know. We always use equations uh, of constant angular momentum of the Earth about the Sun. It's only because that the torque on the Earth due to the Earth uh, direction force of the Sun is zero. This implies that angular moment of the Earth about the Sun is constant. The gravitational force on the earth does not create any torque because the angle between force and gravity vector is one reality. Going through the uh, equations, it is very obvious that torque becomes zero. And here we can write gravitational force on the earth due to the sun does not create any torque. And that also implies that the angular moment of the earth about the sun has to remain constant because we already know if there is no torque about a point, then the angular momentum about that point remains constant. Sixth point. <coughs> Let us take a compound pendulum, compound pendulum whose center of mass is this and which is suspended from a fixed point. Let me suppose the fixed point is here. The distance between the fixed point and the center of mass, let me suppose that is L. It is being pivoted here and it can rotate about this point. Let me push it. This point, the center of mass will go in the upward direction against the force of gravity. Let me suppose it goes over here. But the center of mass, when it pushes up, the gravitational force will try to pull it down because the gravitational force acting on the rigid body will create torque when it is displaced from the mean position. Initially, at this point, the gravitational force would not create any torque because the force passes through this point. Oh, if a force passes through any fixed point, the torque about that point is obviously zero. The force should not pass through the point about which you are finding the angular moment. So, sorry, angle about which you are finding the torque. So here at this point, when the compound pendulum is pushed a little bit through an angle theta, the gravitational force acting on the rigid body that is vertically downwards, this force will create torque. And we have to find how much torque it is going to create about this fixed point. This is length L. Let me draw a perpendicular here. It is L here from here to here. This part is this part is L cos theta, resolving this L into components. This is L sin theta. So it is force axis. And what is the shortest distance between the force line and the point about which we are finding the, the torque? And that is, it is L sin theta. So in other words, which I have already described, that if we want to find the torque, we have to multiply, multiply that force and the shortest distance between the force line and the fixed point. So the torque will be given as mg, that is the force, the gravitational force, and L sin theta. We write here negative sign. Because this torque will try to bring the, bring the whole rigid body back to the mean position. And in coming to the mean position, possibly it will overshoot. And may, it, it, may, it may oscillate back and forth. And finally, that will be given by the equation itself. So this torque, I can write as I alpha. One more equation for torque, that is moment of inertia into angular acceleration, that is minus mgl sine theta. While i is the moment of inertia about the point, about this fixed point, about which is pivoted, 
I is the moment of inertia. If the displacement is very small, I mean the theta is very small, then sine theta can simply be replaced by the theta itself that we already know through mathematics. If sine theta uh, theta is very small, sine theta can be replaced by theta. So we can write I alpha is equal to minus mg L theta. Sine theta can be written as theta for small theta. Now here alpha is that is angular acceleration, the mg L by I theta. If you try to recognize the equation, the equation tells you that the compound pendulum must oscillate back and forth, simple harmonically. Because we have a simple harmonic equation that is uh, acceleration should be equal to minus omega square x or alpha should be equal to minus omega square theta. So these two are the standard equations. These two are the standard equations for simple harmonic motion. If we compare this equation, this equation can easily be compared with either of the two, I mean with this equation. So that simply, this implies, this means that the compound pendulum will oscillate back and forth simple harmonic. Because this equation resembles the simple harmonic motion equation with omega square given by mg L by I or omega is root of mg L by I. If we find time period of, of, of this, it is 2 pi by t is mg L by I or t is equal to 2 pi root of reciprocal of this whole I by mgl. Now let me go to the concept number 7. Concept number 7. In the 7th concept let me take a an oscillating ball hanging through a string fixed at point here of length L. Let me find its torque where it's pushed to, to either side to a small angle. If I push it to the either side through a small angle, it will reach here through an angle theta. The gravitational force that is acting downwards is mg. And this is length L. If I resolve this length into two components, this is L cos and this is L sine theta. So what is the torque produced by the gravitation force? The torque produced by the gravitation force is simply mg multiplied by this L sine theta. That is mg in the shortest distance between the fixed point and the uh, force axis. That is this much of distance or this is this much of distance. It is L sine theta. Again, I can write, uh, it can be put it like this. I alpha is the same as minus mg L sine theta, negative sine because the torque tries to restore it back to the mean position. Alpha is minus mg L by I sine theta. If theta is small, then alpha is equal to minus mg L by I theta. Again, we can say it's a simple harmonic motion. So these are a few examples where we can find torque very quickly by using the basic techniques of multiplying force to uh, shortest distance from the fixed point on to the force axis. Eight. Let me take the example of a uh, rolling sphere. A sphere, a sphere, a sphere which sippens, it sippens with angular velocity omega, let me suppose, omega zero. It only sippens with angular velocity omega zero. And I lower it onto the ground. It rubs with the ground, creating some frictional force. And finally rubs and rubs and slides onto the ground. And finally it rolls smoothly with velocity v and angular velocity omega. The problem here is, 
if it spins with omega zero angular velocity and it only it has a spin motion only a spin motion it's lower to the ground and finally it moves forward with angular velocity omega and velocity v after it starts pure rolling but here it is spinning so we have to find the, well, the question is what is the relation between omega and omega zero initial angular velocity and final angular velocity when it starts uh, rolling onto the ground now here when it is lower to the ground, let me make a diagram like this. It is lower to the ground. It is lower to the ground and it rubs with the ground. It rubs with the ground. Obviously, this point has a backward velocity and the friction forces forward. Here we will use a trick. The trick is, the trick is very sim simple. We'll find the torque about this point O. As we know, the force passes through this point O and torque about this point will be zero. If torque about this point will be zero, then the angular momentum about this point will be conserved. So angular momentum when it is lower to the ground will be just equal to the angular momentum and it moves forward with the velocity V because the force passes through the point O. So the concept is the force passes through this point and torque about this point is zero. And we have to find the angular momentum about this point, which remains constant throughout the motion. So what is the angular momentum uh, of the uh, spinning body? Uh, when it is lowered onto the ground, that's L equal to, that's now uh, I omega on B. This is the angular momentum, spinning angular momentum of a, of a body. That is two by five M R square into omega zero. This is the angular momentum when the body only spins. But when it moves onwards and it finally starts rolling. In rolling, it has spin angular moment, spin angular momentum, and also it has translational angular momentum. So finally, when the body reaches here and starts rolling in the forward direction, so their angular momentum is initial angular momentum, let me suppose, it is final angular momentum is equal to that will be two parts. It has a spin angular momentum, it has a translational angular momentum. But initially it was having only a spin angular momentum. As you know, the, when the force passes through the point of contact, the angular momentum about the point of contact point should be constant. So I have written initial angular momentum, which was only what? Uh, only uh, uh, spinning part, intrinsic angular momentum. And finally, here at this point, when it moves forward in a translational manner, but rolling, of course, in that case, we have two parts of angular momentum here. That is, I omega plus what is the angular momentum here due to this uh, because momentum is mv here it is mvr mvr so it is lf final angular momentum when it starts rolling that is 2 by 5 mr square omega plus mvr but what's the condition for rolling the condition for rolling The condition for rolling is V should be equal to R omega. It's a well-known condition. In case of rolling, the velocity of center of mass velocity should be R omega. So if we substitute it here, LF is equal to 2 by 5 M R square omega plus M R omega into R, substituting V as R omega. So Equating the two, we get Li is equal to Lf, that is uh, 2 by 5 mr square omega 0 should be equal to 2 by 5 mr square omega plus mr square omega. mr square gets cancelled throughout, and 2 by 5 omega 0 is equal to 2 by 5 omega plus omega. Here it is 2 by 5 omega 0 is 7 by 5 omega. This gets, gets cancelled. Omega, I mean the angular velocity here is equal to 2 by 7 omega 0. That is the answer for the angular velocity of the rolling sphere. Angular velocity of the sphere when it starts rolling in the forward direction. 
uh, we will continue to deliver lectures on uh, rotational dynamics. Uh, in these series of lectures, we'll discuss many more examples and application techniques of torque and angular momentum. Thank you for now.